Hello everyone, welcome back. So it's impossible to maintain when you have many users in an organization. If you look at my last video on how to log into Compute Engine VM, I showed you to copy that public key and put that in the metadata section. Now think about if you are having like 100 users or 200 users, or even if your organization is even bigger than that, it's impossible to maintain and put those keys in the metadata for each user. So that's when you're going to learn a new concept by end of this video called OS Login. So the benefits of OS Login is it will link your actual Google Cloud account to the Linux user. It could be a Google Cloud user account or it could be a service account. And I'm going to show you both how to use a user account as well as service account. So that makes it easy when you have a OS Login activated because you can control everything from IAM. And the second most important thing is that if you are activating OS login and if you're managing your users through OS login through IAM, it's easy for administration from your Google Cloud perspective because you can deactivate that user account easily from IAM itself. So you don't have to you know, remove the keys or you don't have to manage everything from a, from a keys point of view. And the other important thing is OS login allows you to control how your user access should be, whether your user can do a sudo or whether your user doesn't have an administrative access. So you can control that from IAM itself. So that's a huge benefit from uh, OS login point of view. So now you know all the benefits and if there is any question in any associate exam or even professional exam about how you manage users across the organization, you see OS login in an option, then pretty much like that would be the correct answer because it's not possible to maintain otherwise by managing keys and, and managing individual users through the public keys. Now let's go into the console and I'm gonna show you the easiest way, the simple way to enable OS login. You can follow the documentation as well. I'm gonna share the links of the documents too. It's a bit tricky uh, when you go through the documentation, but I'm gonna make it very easy for you. All right, so as always, you know, log into the console and I have, um, so I have selected the project here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to my um, Linux. So I'm going to use Linux here. You can use Windows as well if you want, but basically go to your um, SDK. So the first step is you have to enable OS login at a project level, or you can also enable OS login at a VM level. So, or even at an organization level, because I do not have a G Suite, I cannot use organizations. If you are practicing in your free account, you cannot use organizations as well. So what I'm gonna show you is how to activate first step, the OS login. So for that, go to the compute engine and go to the metadata section. So in the metadata, click on edit or add and type this exact thing. So I'm gonna paste this, enable OS login, and make it as a true, that's it. Or if you want to disable it, you can delete this or you can make it as false. And if you observe my uh, metadata section, I do not have even SSH keys. And before, in my previous video, I used to have SSH keys, but I have removed them completely to make it easier for you to relate that I'm not gonna have anything in the terms of managing SSH keys manually here. So now after you have activated OS login, you're going to go back to my Linux environment, which is a client environment. And here I have uh, my G Cloud SDK installed. And first things first, so in the first part of this tutorial, I'm gonna use my Google Cloud user ID, which is the Gmail user. Let me show you that as well. Now, if I go to the IAM section, you can see that I have my, you know, user email address and then the role, uh, which is owner. So currently I'm the owner of this project. Now, if I go back to my client, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do G Cloud init. So if you're installing or if you have installed SDK for the first time, you have to do G Cloud initialization where you want to initialize um, the whole user account. And then when you do it for the first time, it will ask you to enter some credentials by logging into the, uh, you know, your Gmail address. So you can do all that stuff and let me know if you have any issues with that, but I have done it before. So when I do G Cloud in it, it's going to ask me to do the reinitialization again because I've done it before. So I'm going to do 
that for you and then click on one so here it's gonna ask me an option i'm going to do for my user here select option two and select the project that you want to select i'm going to select the youtube project So I'm going to select US East 1B as my zone, as a default zone. Perfect. So now I'm done with the gcloud init configuration. And if I want to check it real quick, I can do gcloud config list. As you can see, the account is set for my email address, my Google account, which is good. And then it has project and it has region and zone so the gcloud configuration for this um, shell is set the next thing that we have to make sure is there are two important permissions that you want to set for a google account or for a service account these two permissions are very important i'm gonna copy this and paste it in the description as well but these two are more often asked in the exam too one permission the first permission is compute.os login and the second one is compute os admin login you don't have to set both of them you just have to set one either you want to go with os login or you want to you want to go with admin login if you set os login the user that is connecting to that instance will have only a normal user access is not going to have or she is not going to have a root access so if you are giving permission to that user or to the to one of uh, you know your team member os admin login that team member will get sudo access which means that person can become root so that's the difference between these two so in an exam if they would ask you a group of people need administration access or administrative access then the option would be compute os admin login and and this is the permission that you have to give or you have to assign now my multi cloud guy uh, in gmail account being the owner it already has these two permissions it has these two and it has many more permissions because it's a it's a primitive role since i'm the owner i already have the permissions of uh, os login and as well as os admin login so i don't have to set explicitly anything here the next thing that we have to do is we have to send the public key so that we can log in from any third party clients it could be party or it could be uh, uh, any ssh or it could, from your macbook you can just uh, open a terminal and you can log in as well from uh, linux or ssh if you're doing from gcloud you don't have to do that option if you do not have generated private key and public key the command is ssh hyphen keygen um, i have done this before in my previous video also if you observe you would see that you know i have used private key and public key and i have shown you how to use uh, public key copy the public key into the metadata section now since i have those keys i'm not going to do that step but i'm going to show you in dot ssh folder i have a public key which is dot pub and as well as a private key now we have to copy the public key i've already copied the command i'm gonna copy it again and paste it here so this is going to make sure that the key is copied for this username okay copy the username and paste it here i've done it before so i'm just gonna do it again here so this user is the actual username now that we're going to use to log in to a new instance that we're going to create let's go back to the console um, and click on compute engine or select compute engine from the search we're going to create a new instance here so click on create and instance one leave all these things as default click on create it's gonna take a while so i'm gonna pause this video all right now we have instance one created 
and we have the external IP address. So copy the external IP address. And now we're going to do SSH minus I is where you're going to pass your private key dot SSH folder ID underscore RSA username. So we have to copy the username from our notepad here, copy it, paste it at the rate of public IP address, right? So enter. So if you get this error, um, you can go to the known host and nine, just delete this, you know, and do this again. Yes. All right. So now I have logged into the instance that we have created. If I want to test my admin capabilities. I can do sudo su into that instance. And you can see I, I became root user, which means I had um, permissions to become root on this um, instance. Okay, now I'm going to do exit. This completes our part one of the video where I have used my Google account user and then I have logged into the instance using OS login. Now in the part two of the video, um, this is again asked by one of our uh, fellow subscribers to use service account with OS login. So that's where I think it's a bit tricky if you look into the documentation, but I'm going to make it very easy for you and help you to use service account and log into the instance using OS login. Now for that, if you do not know how to create a service account, again, go back to my previous videos on service account. Um, I have created a very good video on that. Um, you can check back on that. But here I already have service account, which is this one. And so what we're going to do, we're going to edit this. I'm going to just delete everything what I have here so that it's easier for you to add the roles from scratch. Now the two one permission uh, that we have to give, like I've said before, is this, right? So either this or this, you know, if you, if you want to give your service account an admin access, meaning if you want to allow person who is accessing who is using the service account to log into that instance as an admin you can give admin uh, but for this demo i'm just going to give os login add role and the permission is compute compute scroll down you would see os login so this is one permission. Now the other important permission is IAM service account user. If you do not give this, you're going to get an error, permission denied and stuff. So make sure that you're going to give this permission. I, I know a lot of people, uh, if you browse internet, you're going to see that uh, they forget to give this permission and they would see errors uh, for service account. So the role, click on the role again, scroll down, go to the service account, um role here and select service account user save it all right so now we have set the permissions as well the right permissions the other important thing that we have we have to remember is the instance should have this service account i mean by default when you create an instance if you do not specify the service account it takes the default service account right so we have to change that and, and that's the best practice as well i've covered that in my previous videos like how you can change a service account um, from the existing vm how you can use a how you can use a user defined service account so that's covered in my previous videos as well so you can look into that and to change a service account you have to stop the instance all right so the instance is stopped um, we're going to select that instance and select the instance go to edit scroll down you're going to see a section of service account here it has selected the default service account change that to the one that we just changed the permission save it and start the instance we're going to start it
give it a couple of seconds to start the instance we can wait for that to happen and refresh all right so the instance got started now go back to your shell and uh, currently just to show you we have gcloud config list we have currently my user account that is set my gmail account right we have to change that to service account the command for that is gcloud auth activate service account my bad i haven't copied that copy it and then paste it here so gcloud auth service account key file is going to be your service account key file uh, when you have downloaded the json file you can give that here and click on enter so now if you do gcloud config list you are going to see a new account so previously it was a google account now we have set the service account all right so now we're going to do the same exercise that we have done before we're going to copy uh, the public key like we have done it for my google account we're going to do this the same thing for the service account as well copy okay so it copied the key um, for this service account and then the username is this copy it here so now we have the username as well we're going to do a quick test by doing ssh ssh do control r and here instead of this user it's going to be my service account user and the ip address is same click on enter perfect so now we have logged in to uh, the linux server um, using the service account and now we can try doing sudo su and this is the exact result that we are expecting because i gave only os login permission and service account should not become root user so this is good so this completes the second part of the video too so you have learned in this video how to use Google account user and login and as well as service account user and login uh, using the OS login feature of Google Cloud. I hope this video is going to give uh, going to give you a complete clarity on OS login but if you have any questions let me know in the comment section. If you have any issues as well let me know I can help you fix that. Uh, if you want to go into the details or in, in depth of how OS login login is actually implemented in Linux. I'm going to paste you the link of the GitHub page that Google has created. You can go through that as well. Uh, with that, thank you so much uh, for asking in the comments about OS login. And I hope you're going to implement this in your company. And I hope you're going to answer any question that you see in the exam related to this uh, SSH login or OS login.